Welcome to the instructional handover video for the Chasson 640 Titanium Ultimate Edition and this is the new 2023 model. So I'm going to walk you around the outside of the vehicle first and then we'll move on outside. So we were still based on the Ford engine, based on the 170 automatic. You'll see the new signs and the new decals on the outside of the vehicle. The black awnings have stayed the same. So these are the fuel awnings. We'll sell you a separate video of how to use that. Behind the driver's door, we've got the gas locker in the same position, utilizing the regulator just there. You can fit anything between a six and an 11 refillable bottle just in there. And to open it, you just pull the handle twice and it releases it. To close it, push it in and then turn the lock to lock the button just there. Behind that, we've got a new style door. So pull the handle, works off the central lock-in and it's now got a ram just at the top to hold the door closed or open. Got a new internal card which still has the flash blind and the fly screen on just there. Again, manually operate it just using the key there. Fridge vents behind and an awning light just above it. Behind that, we've got the barbecue point still standard on this particular one and then below that we've got the drain which is still pulled with a handle and comes out of the pipe in the center of the vehicle just there pull it towards the outside of the vehicle to drain it push it in to fill it back up behind that we're still using the Thetford toilet cassette lift up the handle slide it out you'll see that there's the vacuum button just at the bottom the little uh, orange circle You've got the little uh, emptying spout, which you just unscrew. Tip it up, press the button, that will empty the toilet out. We've got a handle in the back and we've got wheels. When we're ready to put it back in, and it should slide in really easily, just clip it over there and just make sure that that handle seats just in that little groove there. Again, one key will lock all the external lockers as well on here. So opening the rear locker, the twin, so two times and that will open it and we've got a door retainer just there for it to go in. The chasson when the power's on does have a light in here, turns on and off, just like so. We do have 12 volt and mains socket points. We do have a weight restriction, so just bear that in mind when you're loading up this area. And in here you will find all the standard equipment that is supplied from new. So tire inflation kit and compressor, mains cable, fire extinguisher, plugs and that blue filler, external shower, in the box is where the awning is for the awning pole, gas pigtail, smoke alarm, carbon monoxide detector, the bed winder which goes to the front of the vehicle, the towing eye, your locking wheel nut key and all the manuals and handbooks are in the blue chasson bag. There we've got external screens and internal blinds that come with it and the two cushions are the makeup cushions which I'll come on to later in the vehicle. For those with the keen eye you'll see that there's a sliding compartment so this allows access in from outside the garage area into the habitation area and we've also got heated vents in here so you can heat up this area. So quite a lot in there and again I'll come on to show you later in the video how the bed makes up for the drop the bed underneath the drop down. To the rear of the vehicle, bike rack pre-mountings, one big change for this year is the camera now is mounted low down. So it's just found there on the new chassons. Got the high level brake light as previous models and then we've got the large locker on the passenger side. So again, two and two will then allow that to open. We've got the little turnbuckles which will hold the shelves down or up, depending on what you want to there. And then again, accessibility into that area, just there. This door too is on a door retainer, which can just be found just in the middle of the door. In front of that, we've got the technical locker area. We've got the, and I'll show you how to get in that. Again, it's one key for everything. We've got the mains point just located there. To get in there, you just press the buttons on either side and it will drop down. On the left of this area, we've got your main fuse box. Again, a little diagram to tell you what each one 
uh, relates to as well as the information in the actual pack and then we've got your main RCD breaker so that's your electrical side of it on the water side got the main water filler point so just there just unscrew the cap and then fill up the fresh water you first must close the drain valve now the drain valve is just located if I just close that underneath the vehicle just where the sticker says and you'll see it's just up there where the white fitting is now we remove the standard push fits from the chassons and put the new drain tap on there so that white one has a little wheel on the end of it that you just turn to drain the water down this is what we do at MB Motorhomes it is not standard from chasson it's just a push fit a black push fit that's supplied so to drain your fresh water just undo the little wheel uh, anti-clockwise and it will drain the fresh water and then clockwise to fill it up and that is the white pipe just on the end there and that is located directly in line with the sticker on the outside of the vehicle so inside you have got the facility as it says on the door to run it at a minimum or a maximum level and that is the little grey lever just down there forward of that we've got the vent for the water heater now you will need to remove the, rec the, remove the cover for that to work on gas and you simply press down on the top and lift up on the bottom and that will remove the cover just like so so that will need to be as it is now for you to use it on gas on electric you can use the cover on if you want to do it but on gas it will fail if you don't remove that forward of that is the external shower point it is marked on there is the external shower point so that's where the lead that I showed you earlier in the video just plugs into just lifts up and pushes in to the fitting just there to remove it you just push that back that collar back and that removes it from its holder forward once you open the cab door we've got the diesel filler point and the add blue point just down there so add blue and filler point they are marked clearly on there so and you've got to have your door open to do that the leisure battery can be found underneath here in the box and the seats move forward and backwards just by pulling the lever you have got some electrics now just located underneath there as well to do with the charging of the vehicle uh, so that's where that can be found like I say to slide it forward and backwards you just lift up the bar the cab area is fitted with Remy's blinds and you simply just pull them out of the holder down there slide them across and just hook that hook that up and underneath sorry quite difficult to do with the camera in my hand but just hook that in place there and that will hold the blind in place the one at the front will pull up there's one either side just pulls up and then we'll sit in the top bar to secure that off and then gently back in Again, there's a couple of points you can either close it sort of three quarters or fuller and sits back in to screen that off so gently does it and then back in place so that are the blinds on the side door and again you've got that on the drivers and the passengers the wing mirrors themselves will manually fold in and then the top one will electrically operate the bottom one you'll just need to manually set it depending where you want your blind spot to be on the vehicle towards the front of the vehicle one unique thing to the transits is the bonnet release catch so pop your key in now you need to turn this to the left and then to the right and then with your opposite hand open up the bonnet once open you've got points where it will tell you where your negative point is so that's just down here the little metal fitting positive point you've got oil and your dipstick and your screen wash just can be found there so quite complete quite easy to find where the items are under there just reverse what you do to take the stay out and gently just close it remembering to remove your keys out of there like so
So that's the outside of the vehicle done. Let's move on inside and go through the internal elements for the vehicle. So the vehicle comes with carpets and it also comes with the black cab carpets as well. Your main control panel can be found next to the door. So let's just start from the beginning. So if you turn that off, you've got a blank panel. Your first option that you need to have turned on is that green one. Now you'll see that there's another green button come on straight away. When you're charging the vehicle, you've got to have the green light on for the charge to get into the vehicle. And that's what you need to do. The next option along is the lights. So you'll see that varying lights have come on. Now these can be controlled by light switches around the vehicle. There's also a couple of light switches up here, which do the low level lights and do the ambient lighting just there. So just take note of that. Another light switch that turns on and off underneath there. These ones turn on and off just by pressing them. And then the one that most people forget and ask us quite a bit about is the bathroom one. Just underneath the sink and a little rocker switch there. So that's the lights. The next long and long is the water pump. Now you'll see everything that you select will light up and highlight to tell you that it is running. So it is advisable not to put your pump on unless you've got fresh water in there because you can damage the pump. And what you will need to do first of all is once you've got fresh water in there, you'll put your pump on and you'll prime the system <coughs> on the hot side of it to get your hot water. I'm going to come to that in a minute once I've done the control panel, but I'll just revert back to that to show you how to do it. The next one along is your external awning light. So that tells you that that's on. The bottom four options, we've got power in the habitation battery. So just press and hold it. Power in the engine battery. Any water that's in the vehicle, so there's none currently. And then you've got a dim button. So people often ask us whether we can dim the control panel or brighten it up. You simply hold on to the button on the bottom right hand side and it will dim it down. So in an evening, if you didn't want them lights on, albeit you did want them working, but you didn't want it on, you can dim it down that way to brighten them back up again. Press and hold it, and they will go up to whatever desired setting that you want. So that's the main control panel. The controller at the side here is for your Webasto heating. So this is the diesel heating system. It runs completely separate of the water. So this just heats the vehicle. To get it working, you'll need to put it onto the green symbol and that will then tell you that it's on. Use the dial then to determine what temperature you want it on the vehicle. If you press it again, it will allow you to change the actual settings from low to high to medium. So again, choose which one you want. And then the little figure eight is just continual. So that will then continue the work so that gets the temperature and then turn off. Now you'll see that the lights are flickering. Always does this when starting up the Webasto system. So we do advise you to do it once you're up to, up to mains or even whilst you're driving. Just five minutes before you get there, just flick the heating on, stop safely, keep the engine running, and it will take less power out of your leisure battery because you're driving and putting it back in. So that is one beauty of this system is you can have it running and heating while you're traveling to the site. When you finish doing it, just press the button and it will go off. There are some other options that you can go through, but I would say to you, look at your handbook, get familiar with the settings. You've got some fan setting, time setting, things like that. Read through your handbook, but make sure you get familiar with how to turn it on, how to change the temperature, how to change the fan speed, <coughs> how to switch it on and off before you then start looking at the more complex items of that system. Okay. So I mentioned about priming the water system. What we'll need to do first of all is find the water boiler that's located underneath this seat here. So first of all, lift up the cushions. So with the cushions out of the way, you'll lift up this panel and you will see the water boiler is located under there. What we're looking for is in the front area, along with the charger and the water pump and your water filter, you can change this little filter if it gets clogged up. Down here, we're looking at the little yellow toggle valve. Now, in the up position like that, it's draining any water out of the boiler. 
to use it in the working position you'll need to flick it down either that way or the front of the vehicle or that way with that down it will allow you then to go to your pump turn your pump on turn your taps to hot and prime through that boiler in essence what you're doing is you're pulling air through the boiler filling it up with water and then allowing you which will then allow you to go to your water controls and control how you want to operate and warm your water draining it down just flick the button back up and that will drain it down so that is your water heater separate from the Wabasto system that I've said the controls for that can be found in the kitchen area just up here and you've got two controllers here on the left hand side you've got electric so it's a three-way switch so flick it up <coughs> will give you power on the electric to one kilowatt middle position is off and down you've got the two kilowatt option for the electric heating so the right hand side of it is your gas now you must have gas on and if you don't it will flash up with the red light and again on here we've got a 50 degree option and we've got a 70 so either up to 50 middle to off or down to 70. make sure when you're not using it or when the boiler is empty of water is they're both in that middle position so that panel up there is for your water heater to lock it just press the button in and to open the cupboard you do the opposite press it again and it will allow you to then open the cupboards so plenty of storage in this particular model we've got little pockets that are around we've got an extension piece here for the kitchen area we've got cupboard spaces here drawer area underneath and in this end cupboard here we've got your bin frame and some more storage units utensil drawer is just here and above that we've got a usb charging point a mains electric point and we've got your bed and your table operation points just there i'll come to them in a minute so I mentioned about priming it so what you'll need to do is on the tap itself you've got a little indicator just there to say hot or cold so hop the bean towards the back of the vehicle, cold bean towards the window. So once you start your pump, you lift up the lever like that. And once there's water in, it will run through. Now it will spit and spurt initially and to run it until you've got a steady stream of water and then turn that tap off, which will allow the boiler to give time to heat up the water on whichever desired function you have chosen. To mix it with cold, just turn it the other way and lift up the handle just like so and that will mix it in takes about 40 minutes to start warming up so do give it plenty of time maybe it's one of the first jobs when you get on site so that you're up to temperature the opening of the windows you'll need to press the little buttons in on all the window stays just like so and then open it out and it will hold out to get it back in just pull it back in and then lock it back in place before moving off we have fly screens and blinds on all the windows just like so larger ones at the front so these have little clips but when pulled down you'll need two hands to do this but just clip in like so and then if you put them together we'll bring up the blinds they do come with decorative curtains on there which are magnetized oh, just like so to move out of your way again just like so and like so and they will go fully out the way or you can if you want completely remove them same on this one here and then above on the roof we've got the fly screen and the blind this is an opening window as well so just wind the handle to open it up 
and that will allow you to let air into the vehicle. This particular model has been fitted with a TV. Now this is a 24 inch TV that will go into it to slide it out. Press the little lever at the side and then the TV will then slide out all the way, just like so. When you're finished, just slide it back in and it will lock in place. Inside this cupboard here is normally where we fit the aerials. We fit the status type aerial. So that's where you'll see it and you'll just release the collar. Just remember they're not standard options from Chasson. Underneath that, we've got the fridge and the freezer. So press the button on the left to turn it on. And then we'll either want to select automatic, manual electric. The battery will only work when the engine is running or we've got gas. Like I say, automatic will select the source that is best for you at the time. The next option onto the right is the temperature that we want it to be in the fridge and the freezer. And then the left option is a blower that blows around the freezer compartment to stop it from sticking. To open it, you just pull them down and that is your freezer compartment. They do inside here have a little stay. So if you're not using it through the winter, they just sit onto the little brackets here and will help it ventilate if you're not using it through whichever time of year that is. In here, you'll see that the shelves that come fitted, salad trays and different levels for you to do there. You'll also see that it's lit up. And when we turn this unit off by pressing and holding that button, then lights will go off. So it's a good indicator to tell you that you have turned off the unit. There is also a little catch at the bottom that locks it in place for you for safe traveling. Behind us in the kitchen, we've got an electric hob and two gas, which are all controlled just by the switches just on here. And then we've got an oven grill function just here. Grill to the right, oven to the left, the grill's on and off. Please leave that just a jar if you're using the grill. And then the oven to the left, which allows you then to change the range. And we've got an igniter to turn the power onto it just there. Do heed the note on there. Please let it cool down, guys, before you close in that lid. Uh, trust me, you'll only do it once. Into the shower and toilet area. If you untie the little clip there, you'll see that there's a little dividing section off. So if someone's in there using the toilet or getting changed to showering, you can divide it off from the rest of the vehicle. Again, use these little ties for a transit to just hold things in place. Stop, and they just fit in. Just like so, and Velcro on. To the left, we've got a storage compartment. Got your mixer tap, so when you're mixing it through on your hot and your cold in the kitchen, I would advise you to do it here. We've got a frosted opening window. We've got the slide compartment, so where you would put all your toiletries in there, and then just slide it back on. Smaller area just underneath here, and then again, another little storage area with a push button there. When the toilet's full, you'll see that the red symbol just lights up there. You will empty it as I've shown you previous in the video and you will need to make sure that when you come to use it again you slide this valve in the right place. Now if the valve's closed like that we'll be able to pull the toilet cassette out. If we slide that to the back of the vehicle it opens the blade and you will not be able to remove it from the toilet cassette on the outside. To close it, slide it back. It's always recommended to close it. And you'll also see then that that light now has gone to tell you that the toilet is empty and you can use it again. The toilet does move around as well so you can slide it into a better position or a more comfortable position. Inside of that we've got the slide mm. compartment into that back garage area that I mentioned. Again if there's anything that you want to get easy access you can put them just there and that magnetises on. We've got the duct board that comes with the vehicle. The two shower doors to so just release the straps and pull them together. We've got the shower head, your soap holder. We've got a opening window, so it opens by turning the little lever here. You do need to remember that sometimes it might be locked, so just move that to the desired place to unlock it or lock it. 
and on here we've got fly screens and we've got blinds when you pinch together and we've got a little coat or towel holder just on there at the back of the vehicle we've got two push buttons and that will give us access into the rear storage area so these are just little cords that will hold things in place and we've got drawers that will just slide open top and bottom on this side we've got little catches that will hold it in place just lift them in the vertical position to do that and then hold it in place just like that so plenty of storage hanging rail at the top as well uh, and some little holders just here like I say that is the telly that we've fitted uh, but it isn't standard so please just note that Okay, let's show you how the beds, well, well, first of all, I'll show you how the seats work. So the traveling seat. So let's remove the cushions to formulate the base of where your seats are. So your seats are always under there. To move them up, you'll need to just pull, so release that handle and then pull the seat up. So that then shows you the seat with the seat belt, the isofix, and you will need to just make sure that this Magnetic area is just pushed back in, just to give you a bit of foot room there. Base of the cushions, that's your base. So that just goes over there. And then the thinner back cushion will then just sit in situ there to give you your travelling seat. There's one on either side of the vehicle and they're both exactly the same. To operate the table and the bed, you first must put the key into the isolation position there. This is where you'll also find the bed mortar behind there with that little metal rod will go into to allow you to lower or raise the bed in the eventuality that the uh, electrics fail on the vehicle. So that's where you will go to do it just under that panel there. So with the key in, this should allow us to operate by pressing the button, the table up, And once up, you can then extend it, pull out the support, and this table will slide 360 degrees, forward, backwards, left and right. If you're setting it for the lower position, you just need to make sure that you're in the right area for it to just support on the actual supports there. And this turnbuckle here will allow you to slide the table easier or harder so just make sure you release that or if you want to have it uh, locked in place for travel just make sure you then screw down that little bracket there and that just holds it in place the bed when it's down will sit on that little support bracket there so put it all the way down just press and hold the button again make sure it's not fouling any of the cushions and it will just stop when it reaches the lowest point and will also stop when it which is a high point, you can stop it in between guys, so there's no problem doing that. So when that's down, if you want to do the bed, if you want it all the way down, you need to move only the scatter cushions. And again, you'll see that there's a mark here. Press the button, that brings the bed down. Now the ladders are preset for you. So the ladders are underneath here, and you'll use it generally in about that height for the higher position and in the lower position if you want to do it. To get it all the way down, keep pressing the button and it will come down. Now if there is something underneath it, it will generally will start to then uh, move at an angle to tell you that there's something under it. Don't try and force it, just remove it back up and remove the obstruction. The bed itself comes with the safety nets which go into the little locking points just up here around the van. When the bed's high, you've got a little shelf for your belongings on either side as well. <clears throat> but it's, you'll see it's a large bed once down. When you finish doing it, you can leave your duvets and your covers on. If your pillows are really big, we tell you to just put them sort of either side, up here and up here, above the cab area. But then you'll just press it and it will go up. There is a limit switch to stop it going up too far. But again, don't put things like your base cushions on it because then you'll start jamming it and causing problems for the motor 
what we tell you to do is through the winter months or when you're not using it for any extended periods of time just drop it down to about that height it allows the roof and the bed to ventilate and stop any build up of mold or condensation when it's up you'll see the lights kick back in and it lights up that area making up the bed you'll see there's two separate cushions there's one without a frame and one with the one without the frame goes onto the bed first and sits like so this one has an arrow on the actual mechanism that lifts up and then we'll sit at the opposite end with the legs giving you a little bit of support to formulate the bed underneath so that's how you would formulate that lower bed and then we go back to our normal sitting area in here we've got curtains fitted to it as well we've got some little storage pockets these lights turn on just behind the curtains there's a little switch that turns on there and we've got a usb point on there we've got a large opening window and again you must push these in before you can turn the handles to open that up and it will open and stay open for you you've got a fly screen and the blind on there too storage around here got the aerial point just up there and then storage around the actual vehicle itself the seats will swivel around and will only lock in place now you just have to be careful on the driver's side of the steering wheel so you'll have to go forward and backwards uh, and on the driver on the passenger side just make sure that you're free from the door so again just in case you're sliding it back around and then you'll hear a lock in place to lock it on here we've got 12 volt points we've got the exit unit so this is the unit which will allow us to uh, see a reversing camera uh, play bluetooth it does have a nav option but it is an extra for the nav we've got the air conditioning which is just in here the 6b gearbox we've got another charging point and a lockable glove box there we've got another storage pocket just located there drink holders lower and in the higher position and we've got the multifunctional steering wheel just there light options to the right and your mirror options for the top mirrors just there locking points for the door can just be found on that middle unit lights for the cab area can be turned on and off there and then we have large sun visors just there so that completes our instructional handover video for the new 2023 Chasson Titanium Ultimate 640. I hope you look forward to using your new motorhome. We look forward to your feedbacks and your comments. But most importantly, we hope it takes you on plenty of new adventures. Thank you.